Hi, it's me Jacqueline. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe my channel and visit my Patreon page. Link in the description. I tried not to get up, but my feet had a mind of their own and led me straight to a large full-length mirror where I saw this cute little girl all dressed up for a party. I broke down and sobbed. There was no way that little girl could have been me, but she was. I was a 14-year-old boy, damn it, but the mirror said otherwise. No one would look at me and see anything but an adorable little girl. Tell me you honestly don't like the way you feel right now, Jamie. Mom pressed. Try to tell me that you don't like the way your panties feel and that you really don't like feeling the cool air as it swirls under your dress. I don't like it, Mom, I screamed, amazed that I had gotten away with it. I don't want to be a girl. Get me out of the stuff. I twisted and turned, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't reach the buttons that held me in my frilly prison. Without help, I was stuck. Stuck as a nine-year-old girl in a frilly dress and even frillier underwear. Mom shook her head in dismay. Calm down, Jamie. I don't want you messing up your new dress. I refused to calm down, though, and began even wilder gyrations, trying to remove the hated dress. Mom said something, then she smiled at me and I immediately calmed down. I stared in the mirror for a few seconds, then my hands began to flip my dress back and forth. Soon I was smiling and giggling, twirling back and forth in front of the mirror, like any other girl, thrilled to be wearing such a pretty dress. Good girl, Mom exclaimed happily. I knew you'd love the way your new clothes felt. It's fun to be a girl. You get to wear such pretty clothes, and they'll feel so much better than anything you've ever worn before. It's such a pretty dress, Mommy. I love it. I exclaimed as I rushed over and gave her a kiss. Can we go out somewhere so I can show everyone how pretty my new dress is? The kiss jolted me back to reality. What had I done, calling her Mommy and begging her to take me out in public, dressed like this? I couldn't help myself, though. Mommy's suggestions just seemed like so much fun. How about a trip to the mall? We can shop for some more pretty dresses. Would you like that? I managed to call up enough reserve willpower to break through the fog. What have you done to me? Nothing much, Mom said with a sly grin. Just made things a little easier on you. Shortened your adjustment period, you might say. You're going to think of yourself as a girl for a few hours while we go shopping. And you'll call me Mommy from now on. I think it sounds so cute. Promise me that no one will know who I am. Please, Mommy. There were times I had begged mom for a special present for Christmas or my birthday, but that begging was nothing compared to the intensity one poured into my begging now. It's okay, Jamie, mom said softly. Relax and be a girl. Relax and be a girl. I stared at mommy for a little while a feeling of warmth and security flowed over me. What was so bad about going to the mall, I wondered. Mommy would be with me and she promised to get me some pretty dresses. Can we go now, mommy? I asked. I want to look at all the pretty clothes. What was I doing? I didn't want to wear these clothes. I didn't want to go anywhere. And I sure didn't want to shop for more dresses, yet I couldn't stop myself. I felt all excited about going out with my mommy, showing off my pretty dress, and couldn't wait for mommy to buy me more pretty things. Here's a nice little purse for you, Jamie, mommy said as she handed me a yellow, patent leather purse with a big flower decal on it. I put some tissues in it for you and even a little wallet. I was so excited as I opened my new purse. Mommy had placed a small package of tissues in it along with a yellow change purse with some coins and a yellow wallet with a dollar bill in it. Thank you for the money, Mommy. I squealed in delight. Maybe I could buy an ice cream cone while we're shopping? It's your money, Jamie. Mommy smiled sweetly. You can spend it on anything you like. Just like a big girl. I exclaimed. I held mommy's hand and skipped through the parking lot at the mall. Once inside, I kept a very tight grip on mommy's hand. There might be bad strangers around, and I didn't want to be separated from my mommy. It was fun walking through the big mall with all those people. A lot of ladies that saw me and mommy stopped to tell me how pretty I looked and what a pretty dress I had on. I wanted mommy to be proud of me so, like a big girl, I smiled and thanked all of the ladies who stopped to talk to us. We bought lots of pretty stuff for me like underwear and PJs, dresses, and some play clothes too. I guess lots of girls like me must like Winnie the Pooh because the stores had all kinds of stuff with Winnie and his friends on them. I got a nightgown with Winnie on it, another with Tigger, and a third one with Rue on it. 
They're so pretty and comfy. I can't wait to go home and put one on, but I don't know which one I'll wear first since they're all so cute. Mommy let me pick out some underwear all by myself, which was really neat, cause I picked some real pretty panties with ruffles and bows on them. Mommy said they're made of something called nylon, just like the panties I had on and the silky part of my petticoat. Mommy went with me into the dressing room and helped me out of my dress and petticoat so I could try on lots of other pretty dresses and clothes. I hated to take off my pretty dress and especially my fluffy petticoat, but mommy said that if I didn't I couldn't try on any new ones so I was a good girl and held very still while mommy undid my dress and helped me out of my petticoat. Mommy picked out a light purple dress that wasn't anywhere near as pretty and fancy as my party dress, but the material was so soft that I just knew it would be so much fun and comfy to wear. Next I had to try on a white skirt and pink top which was soft and comfy like the purple dress, so I asked mommy to buy them for me. Mommy made me really happy when she handed me this cute blue top with a big picture of a unicorn. On it. It felt so nice and comfy and when I put it on it fit me perfectly so mommy said since I was such a good little girl I could have that one too. I also got a couple of short sets that were made out of a silky material that gave me goosebumps when I first tried them on. They looked so neat. I'd seen other girls wearing them and had always wanted a pair. Now I was going to get a whole bunch of them in pink, purple, red, and light blue. Mommy said that I didn't need dresses for school since I'd have to wear a skirt and blouse uniform in my new school. I can't seem to remember much at all about my old school, but Mommy said it wasn't very nice and that I was going to have a good time in my new school, so I guess it's not that important. I got lots of neat stuff that night, a couple of skirts, some dresses, oodles of undies, shorts, and tops too. Mommy even bought me a couple of pairs of stockings like big girls wear. She said I can wear them the next time I get dressed up. When Mommy finished paying for everything, we took all of my new clothes to our car then went back for the ice cream Mommy promised to let me buy. Mommy, I have to go to the girls' room. I told her as I skipped back to the mall. Can you come with me? Of course I can, honey, Mom told me. I don't want you getting lost or meeting up with any mean strangers. When we go to the ladies' bathroom, I sort of felt that something was wrong, but Mommy squeezed my hand and told me how much she loved me, which took away all of the bad feelings. I went into a stall, picked up my dress, and pulled down my panties to go. Then I put everything back the way it was so that I'd be just as pretty as when Mommy put my dress on me. I wouldn't want anyone to see me without panties on because Mommy said that I'm just a little different than other girls, but we're going to get that fixed real soon. That night, I put on a blue nightgown with teddy bears all over it, curled up under my sheets, gave mommy a goodnight kiss, then went to sleep dreaming about all of my pretty new clothes. The next morning, I woke up because I had a bad dream. I dreamed that mommy and I were shopping for new dresses for me when everyone started to point at me and laugh, saying that I was a sissy boy in a dress. I couldn't figure out why I would have such a horrible dream until I got up to go to the bathroom and saw the nightgown I was wearing. That was bad enough, but when I got into the bathroom and lifted the nightgown, I found that I was also wearing a pair of pink nylon panties with ruffles across the seat. It hadn't been a dream. It was a nightmare I found when I went to my closet and saw all of the new clothes. Mommy really had taken me to the mall as a little girl and bought me girls' clothes. Mommy, what happened? I screamed from my room. Please tell me you didn't take me anywhere. Calm down, Jamie, Mommy said as she came into my room. You were the perfect little lady and had a wonderful time. But people saw me in that yellow party dress you made me wear. I cried. They must have laughed their heads off. No one laughed at you, Jamie, Mom said firmly. Several ladies did stop to compliment you on how pretty you looked. You were such a sweet girl, smiling and thanking them. I was so proud of you. Memories of holding Mommy's hand, skipping through the parking lot, a breeze gently lifting my petticoat and blowing across my ruffled, pantied, but came rushing back to me. I could see the ladies smiling as they approached us, leaning over to get a better look at my dress and telling me how cute I was, and I could hear my girlish-sounding voice thanking them. How, Mommy? How did you do that to me? I asked in wonder. I remember being such a little sissy in that dress, then trying on other clothes. Mom shrugged. It was easy. She said with a laugh. One of the suggestions Mrs. Donegan and I planted in your brain was that you'll become a little girl whenever I tell you to. You'll forget all about being a boy and be the sweetest little girl a mother could ever hope for. 
You spent half of yesterday afternoon and all of the evening as a nine-year-old girl. Oh my god, I lamented. You can turn me on and off like a light bulb? Sort of. Mom giggled. But don't worry, I won't do it to embarrass you or anything. You're going to be reluctant to do what needs done at first, Jamie, so I'll need to use it to help you over the rough spots. Once you get used to being a girl and the hormones start to walk, I won't need it as much. No, mommy, I started to shout. It isn't right. You can't make me think that I'm a little girl. You mean you're not my little girl? I heard mommy ask. You're silly mommy, I giggled. Who else's little girl would I be? Damn. I hissed. Quite that. Just as soon as I'm sure you're really my little girl, Jamie. Mommy said slowly. What do you want to wear today? It sure won't be that dress again. I told her. Suddenly I felt confused. I loved my pretty dress. What was wrong with wearing it again? How about one of your pretty new running short sets? Mommy offered. I'm sure they'll be comfortable and I'll bet you like the way they feel too. Okay, mommy, I'll wear the pink ones. I agreed and rushed off to change. My ruffled panties didn't look good under my shorts, so I pulled out a plainer pair from my drawer. Now how did I get a drawer full of panties? I wondered to myself. Mommy must have unpacked for me, I thought suddenly. She's so nice, I'll have to give her a couple of extra kisses. I changed M panties and pulled on my shorts, noticing that they looked so much nicer without the bulges from my ruffled panties. I hated to have to take off my ruffled ones because they made me feel so good, but even these plain white ones made out of that nylon stuff made me feel so pretty. I brushed out my long blonde hair, grabbed a hot pink ponytail holder off my dresser. I don't remember them being there before, but suddenly I've got a dozen in all different colors, then ran out to show mommy how I looked. Mommy, mommy, my new shorts are so nice. I called out as I rushed to her open arms. Thank you, mommy, I said as I smothered her with kisses. My goodness, I'm getting all kinds of kisses, mommy laughed. What's the special occasion? I just wanted to say thanks for all of the pretty clothes you bought me and tell you that I think you're the most wonderful mommy a girl could have. You're most welcome, Jamie, mom told me as she held me tight. I'm just happy to have such a sweet, pretty little girl like you for a daughter. We hugged each other for a couple of minutes before I suddenly realized what I had done. I started to tense up, but then I heard mommy's soft voice. Calm down, Jamie, she was telling me. Everything's okay. How can it be okay? I sobbed pitifully. I'm all dressed up like a little girl waiting for her mommy to fix her ponytail. I just took off a pair of sissy-looking panties, but put on another pair of panties instead of my own underwear. Speaking of which, how did I get a drawer full of panties and where are my underwear? You are a little girl, Jamie. There's nothing wrong with dressing like one. Your old underwear and all of your old clothes are gone. You have a lot of pretty outfits now, so you won't need those ugly boy clothes anymore. No, you can't do this, mommy. You just can't. I screamed through my tears. That will be enough of that young lady, I heard mommy say in a stern voice. Then she whispered those words again. Relax and be a girl, Jamie. Relax and be a girl. I started to feel funny. I knew she was making me think I was a girl again, but this time she wouldn't get away with it. I was to going to fight these feelings with every ounce of strength I had. A fog started to cloud my mind. I knew that if I let it in, I'd become a little girl named Jamie again. What do you want to do today, Jamie? I heard mom ask through the descending fog. I concentrated as hard as I could, but all of a sudden I heard myself say, can I get my ears pierced, mommy? A lot of girls my age have their ears pierced. Good grief, what in heaven's name was I doing? I couldn't believe I was asking mommy to let me get my ears pierced. Hopefully she hadn't picked up on what I had said. That's a wonderful idea, Jamie. Mom clapped her hands in glee. I think you're big enough to wear pierced earrings. We'll get you several different pairs so you'll be able to match them with any outfit you wear. Oh joy, I thought to myself. Earrings for every outfit? What more could a guy ask for? Thank you, Mommy, I found myself saying. I can't wait to see how pretty I'll look. It was as if I was another person altogether. Where were these thoughts and feelings coming from? Mommy, I asked. Could I ask a question, please? Go right ahead, sweetheart. Mommy smiled. I'm listening. Why did I ask for pierced ears? I've never thought about them before. Yes, you have, sweetie, Mom explained. 
All of the things that you've seen or heard little girls do as you were growing up were stored in your brain at some point. When I tell you to be a girl, you start to act the way you think a girl would. Don't you want to wear pretty earrings? Yes, I do, mommy. I giggled excitedly. I can't wait to get my ears pierced and wear earrings like a grown-up lady. Then it's all settled. We'll get your ears pierced this afternoon and maybe an ice cream cone for being so brave. Goody, goody, ice cream. I shouted while jumping up and down. I love ice cream. Once again, reality crashed in on my new little world. Tell me I didn't do what I think I just did. I asked lamely. Afraid so, mom said with a sheepish grin. Sorry, but you were getting to be a pain in the butt for a minute there. I missed my sweet daughter. With no more room for discussion and no stomach for a tantrum, I waited for mommy to dress, then followed her to the car and off to get my ears pierced. Once we got to the mall, I was dragging my feet, trying to delay what I knew was unavoidable. Mommy had to ask me to walk faster several times, and I could tell that she was becoming irritated with me. Pay attention, young lady, she said sternly. You can either quit stalling and get this over with on your own, or once we get into the mall, I will put you over my knee, pull your pants down, and spank you. Do you want everyone to see your pretty panties while I spank you? No, mommy, I'll be good. I promised. Please don't spank me. Good girl, mommy told me as she patted me on the head. Now take my hand and walk with me. I hesitated for a second or so until mommy turned and gave me that look. Before she could say anything, I quickly grabbed her hand and promised to be a good girl. What's really weird is even though she hadn't told me become a girl, I suddenly felt happy and secure holding her hand and walking with her. Could there be some leftover effects of thinking of myself as a girl, I wondered? Please subscribe for the next part and visit my Patreon page for early access.